Alright everyone, welcome to the first part of my Kerbal Space Program tutorial series featuring the Interstellar Extended mod. This mod is one of the more complex mods out there and introduces a number of parts and game mechanics that enhance the original gameplay. The main focus here is to introduce new and futuristic but not unrealistic technologies and show off their strengths and also their weaknesses. My goal for this series is to show off the engines the mod has to offer and explain how they are supposed to work and how you can use them. This first video will cover some basic information about rocket propulsion in general and give you an overview about the available engine types that the mod has to offer and each of these types will then get their own video where I can go more into detail about the different options you have in a certain category. I am generally very open for feedback, so if you got any questions or suggestions what I can additionally talk about, just let me know. But without further ado, let's get started. Alright, so here we are in-game, and as you can see, I threw together this, yeah, let's say engine test bed, where I have all the different categories of engines that I want to talk about right now. Um, the first group of engines, these two, is the conventional chemical, not to say old school, boring way of spacecraft propulsion. And this works by taking a fuel, such as liquid methane and an oxidizer, liquid oxygen, and combust these two in a combustion chamber, which will create a very hot and high density gas. And this gas you can channel out the back through a nozzle, it will reach very high velocities and um, for a certain mass flow and this certain mass flow with a certain velocity, you will get a certain thrust. When talking about a rocket engine's performance, you generally talk about two parameters, one being thrust and the other being specific impulse. Thrust, like I said, is generated by throwing matter out of the back and in general force is defined as mass times acceleration or mass per second mass flow times velocity so the more matter you throw out the back which i'm doing right now by adjusting the throttle the higher thrust i get parameter you cannot change is the velocity or you typically in conventional rockets cannot change Right? So you, I'm varying the thrust, I'm throwing more matter out the back, I'm having a higher mass flow, but my velocity stays the same. So does the specific impulse, or ISP. In other words, sometimes specific impulse is also described as effective exhaust velocity, and this is because ISP is defined as the force, the thrust, divided by the weight flow or weight per second. In general, this means that ISP means how long does this engine have to burn to throw out as much matter as the thrust. So for example, right now, 827.5 kilonewtons at a 309.7 ISP. So this engine will have to burn 309.7 uh, seconds to throw out 800 27.5 kilonewtons worth of matter. And now it expired. Alright, so this gives you a brief overview about like how rocket engines work, how rockets generate thrust, and there are numerous concepts that aim to enhance this rocket performance, because chemical propulsion is limited to a certain ISP. I mean, you see here 307, you see here you have 250, and the maximum ISP that you can reach with chemical propulsion is around 500, right? This is with liquid hydrogen. The Space Shuttle main engines had an ISP of around 450, but this is almost as far as you will get. To further increase the performance of rocket propulsion, you will need advanced technologies, and one of those advanced technologies is thermonuclear propulsion. 
You may remember this little thing from the stock game. Uh, in the stock game it's called the Nerva engine and in Interstellar it also has this engine just a little remodeled and refeatured and it's called the solid core nuclear engine. All right. So nuclear propulsion in general works by taking a propellant, typically hydrogen, and running this propellant by a reactor. A reactor core is very hot, it has a certain thermal energy, and when you run a propellant around this reactor core, the propellant will expand, the propellant will heat up, you will reach high pressures inside the propellant chamber, it's not a combustion chamber anymore, and this hot and high pressurized gas you can run out the back through a nozzle again and generate thrust. And since you're not limited to the chemical energy or uh, combustion heat of a chemical propellant, for example, like if you combust hydrogen with oxygen, oxidizer, you will get a certain temp maximum temperature. But since a reactor can get much hotter than that, you can reach much higher pressures and you can reach much higher velocities uh, out the back of this nozzle. And thus you can reach higher specific impulse. This is an all-in-one solution, but you can also take a reactor and attach a thermal nozzle to it. And if you run your propellant around this reactor through your nozzle, you will also get thrust and a higher specific impulse than chemical propulsion. And since you don't need an oxidizer, or since you can basically run anything around this reactor, you can also just take your intake air, which consists matter, and run this matter around your reactor, and you can create a fair amount of thrust by only using the atmosphere. So you have air intakes here, they take a certain amount of atmosphere in and you run this atmosphere around a reactor and channel it through a nozzle and you will get thrust again. And as you can see, right now, right, wait a second, now I'm not using any propellant. Alright, so this is basically all thermonuclear propulsion is about and um, like I said, the higher your core temperature of your reactor, the higher the specific impulse you will get. And this leads to um, the thought that, for example, fusion energy, which can reach much higher core temperatures, could lead to even higher specific impulses. So if I now take this engine and this engine, both are just thermal nozzles attached to a reactor, just a different type of reactor. And let me shut down this engine real quick. All right, now if I fire these two, you will see that after they spool up, I will have the nozzle that is connected to the fusion reactor generating 58 kilonewtons at 734 ISP. And the other nozzle that is connected to a nuclear reactor at 27.8 kilonewtons at 552 seconds. All right, so here we are in space now, and up till this point, all the rockets that I talked about use thermal energy as their source of thrust generation, either by combusting stuff or uh, using a hot reactor core to, yeah, expand stuff. Um, Certain reactors also have a second resource called charged particles. And charged particles are generally exerted during a fusion reaction, but also during some fission reactions, which is represented by the dusty plasma fission reactor in the K interstellar mod. And these charged particles can be channeled through a magnetic nozzle, such as this one, and reach very high velocities inside this nozzle. So if I right now um, accelerate or turn up the throttle, you will see that it generates almost zero thrust, but at a very, very high specific impulse. And this means that you can run this nozzle, let me shut down this thing, 
you can run this nozzle forever without using any fuel or almost any fuel but you will generate thrust and this engine can also work during time warp you see that it has a warp thrust and a warp ISP so it will um, exert this thrust during time warp and thus you can leave it running for hours and days in a very short time frame and create and reach really high velocities not with this craft because this is very heavy and large and only has quite small reactor but if you build a craft with magnetic propulsion in mind you can reach ridiculously high speeds I will show that in the specific video so this is again a two-part solution and the game also offers a one-part solution for that which is the magneto inertial fusion engine it runs off lithium so this is why I put additional lithium cans here but the initial supply of lithium will last you a fair while um, but yeah generally I'll talk about this later as well but this those two are magnetic kinds of propulsion so third way of using fusion power for propulsion is um, in the DT Vista this is one of the really late game and really really strong engines so um, you will generally not see this engine until very late in the game and you'll see why real quickly right now it has a minimum ISP of 15 thousand and if I just touch the throttle you'll see the thrust is quite high and I can also vary the ISP up to 27,000 and even there on the lowest setting the thrust is already 19 uh, kilonewtons so this engine is clearly very powerful and also it's almost a one part solution the only thing you need is power so you need another reactor to supply the power to the engine but in general this engine is a kind of fusion reactor and uh, or fusion engine and basically the fusion products are expelled right out the back of this engine this is why you have a quite large supply of deuterium and trit tritium that's why it's called DT and this stuff is expelled out the back at really high velocity and a really high temperature and you mix in hydrogen to increase the thrust during throttling up and that's my control key again and you see the thrust is quite high the craft starts spinning up but you'll always need power but this engine is really good late game option alright so that's it for the conventional propulsion methods of like using matter of throwing it out accelerate it out the back uh, let's talk about electric propulsion the stock game has their own version of the ion drive just this one I just scaled it up and the ion drive has a good amount of specific impulse 4200 at a relatively low thrust this is a scaled up model so this thrust is not necessarily realistic but generally electric propulsion works by using electric energy to change the velocity of a propellant to produce thrust what does this mean this stock ion drive uses xenon gases and direct this stream of particles of xenon particles out the back of this engine or thruster at a very high velocity multiple hundred kilometers per second and thus create a very high efficiency method of propulsion typically at a low thrust though so oops right here I have different types of you want to say shut down uh, down here I have the different types of electric propulsion that the interstellar mod offers all right all with those this nice purple exhaust first being like the Attila thruster which is like the ion drive a method where you change the velocity of um, charged particles or the velocity of your propellant or the plasma drive where you uh, create a plasma out of the propellant and this plasma has a very high temperature and you exert this plasma out the back again at high velocities you can see here 11,000 ISP and even at max thrust quite low thrust the Attila way higher thrust 
but lower specific impulse. And the third one here, the Vasimir engine, it can have ridiculously high ISPs. It's a variable specific impulse engine. And this is actually also really in development right now. Um, and you can see as I vary the thrust, the ISP goes down, the thrust goes up. So you can reach very high ISPs at low thrust levels and accelerate the craft for very long, very efficiently. Or if you need more power, you just increase the thrust and take a lower specific impulse. Um, and the last method that I'm just briefly going to touch about is represents like really advanced um, propulsion methods. The Vista actually also goes into that category. Um, and this is here the Alcubierre drive or the warp drive. This basically um, lets you travel faster than the speed of light and it's the last engine that you will unlock probably and um, it works by not accelerating your craft but by translating your craft through space. It basically, basically it moves space around your craft. You're basically in a warp bubble and this warp bubble can um, leave the theoretic limit of uh, light speed and travel much faster than that. So that's it from a basic overview point. Um, I hope you enjoyed it and I hope that I could make myself clear because I think I know about a lot of this stuff but I'm not sure if I'm actually good at explaining it. So if you got any suggestions or any feedback just let me know. Alright, that's it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video where I will talk more in detail about the nuclear thermonuclear propulsion. I think I won't need to cover the uh, chemical propulsion. Alright, thanks for watching. Bye.